Hello everyone. I wanted to share with you my personal planner setup. I keep separate planners for work and personal life. For work, I use a half-letter size disc-bound notebook, which I introduced in my separate videos. For my personal planning and bullet journaling, I've been using the Hobonichi Weeks. I absolutely love the Hobonichi Weeks, but I found that the grid space wasn't sufficient for a year of daily logs, tracking, notes, and memory keeping. Carrying multiple weeks' notebooks for just four months of use was fun, but I realized it's not the best way to organize my life. The information felt scattered and fragmented due to the single grid section covering various things. I considered trying the Hobonichi Week's Mega and added some printed tracker sheets glued to its pages. However, it would still not resolve the needs for dedicated sections for wellness and finances. So, this led me to set up a ring binder. I liked the size of the Hobonichi Weeks for bullet journaling and planning, so I chose a personal size ring binder. However, when I received the ring binder and inserting the paper, I noticed that the space on personal size paper is smaller than I expected. It's not just about the actual writing area the paper provides, but I believe it's due to the proportion of the paper and the limitations in writing movement caused by the binder rings. It's not a deal breaker for me but it's worth mentioning here. My ring planner setup is simple. I've maintained the structure of the Hobonichi weeks and rearranged. Let me break down each section. I started with the schedule section. Each month begins with a monthly page followed by weekly pages. In the weekly section, the left side contains daily records and memory keeping, while the right side is more of planning and future log that has weekly goals, mindset, attitude, and the running to-do list for the week. And then, I insert grid pages for daily logs in a bullet journaling context. The best thing about this setup is that I can insert sheets in the weekly section for daily logs as needed, and the pages can be grouped together with the relevant weeks. Then, I have pages for tracking. Initially, I plan to include various forms, such as routine trackers and habit trackers, but I decided to combine all and have one tracking page per month. This decision was made to use each page more compactly, allowing me to keep six months' worth of information in a planner. The good thing is, I can always add additional pages when needed. Finance section. This year, I'm focused on being more aware of how I spend money. I've started with a wishlist page to give myself a moment of thought before making a purchase. There's also an income page and I hope to fill it with lots of entries this year. The main element of the finance section is expenditure log pages by category. It's not about tracking and recording precise amounts, but understanding the big picture of my spending in each category. This helps with balanced and value-oriented spending within the budget. Project pages. I have blank pages and can travel plans, books to read this year, home cleaning, server organization, etc. here. Decision making section. This is a new section, and I desperately need it. Recently, I've had a difficult time making decisions. If something is important, I believe it deserves a place in my agenda. I've inserted a few blank sheets for now, but I plan to create forms for decision matrices or dilemma decoders. I also use this planner as my wallet, keeping credit cards in the front pockets and some cash in the back pocket. I wanted to keep my planner simple and neat, I still wanted to add a personal touch to make it feel like me. So, I printed quotes that resonated with me and used these sheets as dashboards for each section, adding personal meaning to different areas of the planner. I hope you enjoy this video and thank you for watching.